Hey, what's going on everybody? Today I'm here to talk to you about, well, all of the gears. Yep, that's right. We're talking about gears on top of gears on top of gears. But it's about One Piece gears today. We're going to be ranking them all from worst to best. So let's get right into it. At number seven, we have Tank Man. Tank Man is a variation of Gear 4. There are three variations of Gear 4, and, you know, they're all pretty good. Actually, all of Luffy's gears are pretty uh, well distinguished and are involved in some very good fights. Now that, now that I said that, you may be wondering, what makes Tank Man the bottom? Well, Tank Man, unfortunately, has the disservice of only being in one major fight. And even in that one major fight, it only had very, very few amounts of pages dedicated to it. For example, Gear 4 Bound Man has been used multiple times along with Gear 3rd, Snake Man, even the titular mysterious gear that we will talk about are later. Now, after all that, I would still highly recommend Bound Man. It is still a very good form, and its partake in... In battle against Cracker is something very engaging and provided a different dynamic to it, which was definitely very appreciated. However, since this is a ranking, someone's got to go at the bottom, and that is Tank Man at number 7. Number 6 is unfortunately Gear 3rd. Now, Gear 3rd, while having better build-up than its predecessor, it unfortunately is A, not used as often, and B, not used as spectacular to effect as some of the other gears. Now, this is not to say that Gear 3rd is bad in any particular means. However, it does definitely leave a lot to be des desired, because most of the time it is quite literally Luffy makes big fist or Luffy makes big leg. And while obviously you can choreograph things in any regard, no matter who or what they are, there's obviously some good choreographed potential with anything. But, they can't all be winners. And with Gear 3rd, it definitely feels more limited than Gear 2 and some of the others that we have yet to discuss. Now, it does definitely provide an asset. However, now with Gear 4 and later Gear 5... It really does feel obsolete to a significant extent, mostly because it's weaker than Gear 4. It feels very, very clunky. Now, our next gear is going to be a little bit controversial, and that is Gear 5. Now, a lot of people love Gear 5. A lot of people. But, unfortunately, Gear 5 introduces a lot of good concepts, such as Gear 5's design and... Gear 5's innate potential linking Luffy to the Sun God. However, if you think about it for a little bit, you'll see how that can be a major problem. First off, the idea that Luffy does not have free will goes against the major themes of One Piece, and the fact that this is introduced to begin with is quite discerning. Now, Gear 5 also has the display of being a joking form and this comes across as making threats seem well less threatening which is not something that you should strive to do in your shonen manga however the undoubtable impact that it has had on the series and even outside of the ser series for example multiple in instances were documented of gear 5 breaking news outlets when it was first revealed however that is more of the fact that one piece has progressively been getting bigger and closer to the public eye because while it is the best-selling manga it has never been the most talked about manga but as it has continually gained an online presence, which is something very important when spreading news nowadays, you get this sense that suddenly it's a lot bigger now. Well, that of course contributed to when Gear 5 was finally revealed, everyone of course lost their minds, 
and rightfully so. It is Luffy's awakening. However, just having the hype around you isn't enough to make this list, especially when certain things have more hype. But what happens when you trade hype for overall usefulness? That is when you get Gear 4 Bound Man. Gear 4 Bound Man is, or it was Luffy's pinnacle of strength for a large majority of time. Throughout Dressrosa, all the way to the second last fight on Whole Kick Island. It was considered Luffy's strongest form, and even to this day is considered stronger than Snake Man. Now, strength isn't everything, obviously, but it definitely does provide a lot of capable things to the table. For example, its flight ability allows for greater movement and also allows Luffy to move around without having to use Skywalk, such as Sanji. It gives him a unique way to trans to fight flying opponents without having to rely on other people or straight up jumping, which is a benefit. Plus, its reveal against Doflamingo is still a very, very fantastic moment, very well choreographed, and very engaging. However, the design, while initially can come across as very joking and not too appealing to the eye, it does grow on you. Now, obviously, that is a personal take. However, it is something that just I feel I need to get out there. Now, Bound Man is also Luffy's most used Gear 4 transformation. It is used in Wano, Whole Cake, Dressrosa. It's used in every arc with the exception of Zoe and Megapunk's Island to date since it was introduced. Now, obviously being used frequently doesn't mean it is the best. However, that does contribute to the fact that it grows on you and gives you more of an attachment to it. But sometimes you want to have elevated appearances rather than just a steady stream of consistent ones. And that right now is when we have Snake Man. Snake Man is our number two placement and it is by far Luffy's best transformation post time skip. Now, this debuted in Luffy vs. Katakuri, obviously a very fantastic fight. So, adding on to the fact Oda made the wise decision to unveil a new form, this also kept momentum going in the fight. Plus, its added use and conveyance of speed made it very, very pleasing. Plus, as many of you may have noticed, it has recently appeared in the most latest episode of One Piece, and it has proven that even in Wano's style of animation, Snake Man is an absolute treat. Now, Snake Man's abilities seem to rely on his elasticity and his general speed. Whereas you look at Bound Man and Tank Man. Tank Man specializes in defense. Bound Man is obviously the jack of all trade, the master of none. Snake Man, while not necessarily being super high offense, it comes across very much as a speed demon. It has the ability to move lightning fast. And considering Anel's probably going to re-enter the story very soon, that may be needed. Now, Snake Man continuously showed its superiority as the second best transformation through its multiple iterations and short appearances. His engagement with Kaido using Snake Man is one of the best parts of Kaido versus Luffy. And, unfortunately, it is not used often enough. However, it is proven time and time again that whether it be in a movie, whether it be in the anime, or whether it be in the manga, Snake Man is always a treat, and it is always something to look forward to. Because guess what? Those little spurts of greatness made it climb all the way up to number two.
But when there is number two, there obviously has to be a number one. So who is the gold medalist today? That is none other than Gear 2. Gear 2 is Luffy's first transformation, and it is by far the most frequently used transformation. It has been used numerous times in numerous fight scenes, and it has also shown off something that all forms have created, but since it was the first, it was obviously the most impactful, and that is Luffy's creativity. Luffy has Gear 2 by accelerating his heart rate. Now, he uses this increased heart rate and the fact that he is made of rubber to allow himself to move at hyper-fast speeds, increasing his striking power and movement. This obviously combined with the smoke that comes off of his body, body and the reddish tint affiliated with the form allows it to not only have a distinct enough design that you are easily able to tell gear to from base, it also allows you to clearly understand how serious Luffy is taking the situation. See, because before before you had your Baumans and your Gear 5s, and Gear 2 was his pinnacle of power. And while it has been usurped, it now fills the role of a middle form. This is similar to how Super Saiyan was once the pinnacle of his strength, but now has been surpassed by multiple forms. However, it still indicates that the character in question is taking the interaction very seriously. However, I believe that it does this even better than the instances in Dragon Ball due to the fact that Gear 2 often provides very, very good sustainability in fights. Plus, the added side effects of it, including Luffy's shortening lifespan, does provide a sense of dread. However, he seems to have been able to completely nullify this from the post time skip. Gear 2 while giving off the vision of growth, it allows Luffy to not only continuously keep up with stronger opponents, but it always sits in a back pocket to allow smaller level opponents to still get the sense of relevance. For example, if base Luffy beats an opponent, that doesn't really imply much. However, if Luffy has to go into gear second, then that not only allows people who like to scale the series, such as myself, but it also allows normal audience members to gauge the person's power. After all, Gear 2 Luffy is stronger than base Luffy. And so even in this state where it has become obsolete power-wise to other forms, it still contributes a lot to the plot, which is not common among the Gears. In conclusion, Gear 2 is a phenomenal form with an excellent design, well spurs to uses, and a great demonstration of why Oda is a fantastic writer, because even when the form isn't the strongest, he'll make damn sure that you know how good it is for the plot. Alrighty, folks. I'm so glad you were able to get through this video. I got through it too. But, if you guys would like to get through more videos, how about you like and subscribe, and maybe, just maybe, share this video with a friend. With that being said, thanks for watching.